Hey everybody, welcome back for another episode of I Would Camp That. Uh, it has been a brutal winter up here in Alberta. Uh, there was a point where basically the entire province was in dire straits, absolutely freezing. Several parts of Alberta were the second coldest place on earth behind some random place in Russia. It was crazy. So Rita and I are out uh, just doing an overnighter in the truck. I'm really excited to be back with you folks. It's uh, It's been tough to get out between the weather and uh, I was also on uh, permanent nights at work there for a bit for about six weeks. So that made it hard to get out too. But anyways, the stuff I want to show you tonight, um, we have a few additions to the rig. Uh, we did make some changes to the bed to um, accommodate one of these additions. Uh, let's dive into it and I'll show you what we got. So to help combat those Canadian winter problems, we invested in a buddy heater. I've been hesitant to get one of these, uh, mostly just because our bed takes up the entire rig. And of course, there's that uh, always that fear of uh, low oxygen, carbon monoxide poisoning and all that. Uh, so I did a bunch of research on these. There's so many videos. Um, I don't remember specifically which ones I watched, so shout out to... All the people who have done videos on buddy heaters, I guess. So with this heater, it runs off of the one pound propane. So there's one hooked in there. It's also got a compartment on the other side where you can store an additional one as well too. Uh, it's got its little switch up here for the pilot light and the ignition and all that. Uh, the handle, which makes it really convenient to carry. It's actually not as heavy as it looks. It's pretty light. And we've also got a uh, fan up top here to help circulate the heat. I actually learned that from uh, watching my buddy uh, Jen at Tacoma Traveler. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. I have tested this once just to confirm that I would survive and the truck would not catch fire. As you can see, the uh, rig is intact and I'm clearly alive. So it was a successful stress test. So as you can see, we've made some additions or shall I say subtractions to the rig. So the foam mattress that we use with its mattress protector and everything, um, we ended up actually taking an entire 16 inches off of the bed. And we've made all this extra space back here. And that decision was made solely for the heater. Uh, but I'm also really liking it too for the extra space. Like we're just out for an overnighter. We don't have the fridge. So the Jackery's back here with us. So it's got space. Uh, we've got space for our shoes. My go bag is back here. Uh, even just like quality of life, like climbing in and out of the truck. You know, you've actually got space to kneel. I can actually step in to the truck and kind of like crouch as I come in. It's, it's really nice. And we've got the heater just sitting on a tote there so that it's uh, a little higher up, not, you know, down as low as the, the bottom of the foam and everything. Rita's got uh, steadier hands than I do, so she did the uh, cutting, did it pretty precise in my opinion. So I really like that addition. The one downside is our feet kind of dangle, or at least my feet kind of dangle off a little bit. But honestly, like if that ever bothers me, I can always just put something like soft like solid and then like something soft on top of it underneath and it'll just feel like an extension of the bed. For those of us that are five foot two and some inches, barely, uh, the chop to the end of the bed isn't that bad. My feet barely dangle off even if I'm pulling my, or even if I'm stretching my legs out perfectly straight. This extra space is actually really good because now our boots are not going to be on or up against the foam and causing moisture and dirt to get into our bedding. Speaking of bedding though, we have this one addition. Now, this is a very scratchy, uncomfortable blanket, and that's because it's 100% wool. Wool is naturally fire retardant, not fireproof, but fire retardant. I determined that because the heat coming off of the heater was making the very end of the bed closest to it very hot, uncomfortably hot, too safe, or not very safe hot. So this 100% wool re fire retardant blanket is going to be used to tuck over the end of the bedding and the foam when the heater is in use so that it is dispersing the heat more and not allowing zippers or polyester fabrics to burst into flame. So we went ahead and got one of these babies here. Uh, so it's got, it's one of those uh, thermometers where it's got the inside temperature and the outside temperature. 
And it does for our American viewers, it does switch back and forth between uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. So right now it's uh, about three degrees Celsius inside the truck and about minus four degrees Celsius outside of the truck. So translate to Fahrenheit, about 37.9, 38 Fahrenheit inside, about 24 Fahrenheit outside. I've got the little sensor for that dangling out the back. Uh, we've got the windows opened halfway each side just to have some fresh air coming in here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this bad boy set up and we are going to do a little stress test and see just how, uh, how not only how warm can we get it in here, but I also want to see how much heat the rig will retain overnight. already really nice so on top of having this wool blanket to help distribute the heat from hitting our bedding and keeping our windows open for a supply of fresh air and we also have a carbon monoxide detector on dust inside of the bed there uh, we're also never planning on running this more than half hour intervals tops and never while we're sleeping if both of us are uh, using awake and using the heater and Dustin or I fall asleep, the other person will be responsible for turning this off and remaining awake until it is cooled and safe for both of us to be asleep. It's relatively easy to quickly fire back up again if we wake up too cold or if we need to warm up in the morning before we change our clothes and head out. With all this in mind, this should be a safe and effective addition to the rig to make sure that we can stay safe in cold situations or just idly keeping our hands warm. And on that note, a way for us to make sure that we can, you know, get out at all when Canada winter decides to be, well, be itself. Unless the doors are frozen shut. Yeah, that too. <laughs> that was legit a problem. Another thing with the fan too, like it is already helping to distribute the heat. Like before I turned the fan on, the heat was literally just going up. But now it's uh, distributing quite well. Uh, the fans also do help with condensation as well. These heaters are pretty notorious for causing condensation. A combination of having the fan going, the windows open, and like Rita said, we're not going to run this all night. Uh, I don't feel like our condensation situation is going to be too bad. So it's been about 15 minutes, and as you can see, there's been a significant jump in temperature. The outdoor temp temperature has dropped 1 degree, sitting at minus 5. And we're now sitting at about 23 degrees Celsius. We are holding the thermometer pretty close to the heater, so that's probably affecting it as well, too. But this Buddy heater, it's been going for about 15 and a half minutes now. It's uh, it's doing too good of a job. We're, we basically have room temperature back here. So we've had the heater running for a little over half an hour now. It is super toasty in here, way above room temperature. So it's gotten a little colder outside, but it is 29.3 Celsius here. And uh, switching over to Fahrenheit here, 84.7 Fahrenheit, 19 Fahrenheit outside. So we're going to go ahead and turn the heater off. Um, it's doing a really good job. Well, thanks for joining us for that little stress test. I've been really excited to get out and do this. I wanted to come out on a colder night, but just with the weather, some of the freezing rain we've been having, um, me being stuck on permanent nights for quite a while, made it really difficult to get out. So I'm really excited to be out right now with Rita and have you folks join us. Uh, we're just going to let the heater cool down and uh, then we're going to get ready for sleep.
Oh, now that is heavenly. Oh, living like a truck camp king. Good morning, everyone. We survived the night. My feet are about the only thing that got frozen last night. Um, one downside to having this uh, section of the bed cut off is the feet kind of dangle. So that could have been easily rectified by having my feet in the sleeping bag, having better socks on. I did offer you better socks. <laughs> yeah. So otherwise, uh, it was a good night. Uh, just doing some recording on my phone right now. Um, we're just one of the problems with winter camping is uh, the camera gets a little bit of condensation on the lens and stuff. So it just keeps fogging up. As for the thermometer, uh, we haven't had the heater on for too long, uh, sitting at about five degrees Celsius. So we didn't retain a lot of heat, but hey, at least it stayed above zero and it definitely got colder outside last night. At one point when I woke up and I looked at this, the outdoor temperature had dipped down to about minus 11. Let's just switch that over to Fahrenheit. So that's what we're sitting at for Fahrenheit right now. Well, thanks for joining us for this overnighter. Uh, like I said, it's been a while since we could get out. Uh, we'll see what the rest of the winter brings us. This heater is a fantastic addition. Uh, so looking forward to taking that out on some more adventures. Once we've warmed up here, I think we're gonna head home and we'll see what else we get up to. See you all next time. Stay classy.